All right, primitives. Now, primitives can be stacked on top of other primitives to in 2D space. So we're going to kind of go over the 101 of moving and manipulating primitives. I'm going to start out with a 3D cylinder. And what I want to do is make this so it's a little bit more rich in polygons. Okay, to do that, I can go to initialization. And in here, I can add some more and more this way. This will make it super smooth looking. Take off polyframe. And let me explain something. It doesn't matter how tall this is because I'm looking straight down at it. By holding shift, it snaps it down. Okay. The minute I uncheck edit, it becomes 2D sort of. And let me explain that. When I go over to move, I can move it around. I could scale it if I wanted to. And I could scale it in um, X or Z or Y. But I would have to have the Z showing. So in other words, I'd have to go back to edit and then go to scale with edit checked off to be able to scale it this way. Because I can't, it, it's very hard to rotate it like this. You can see that I'm having a, a tough time. It's better to go back to edit to rotate. So now I have this little hockey puck. Well, we're going to add to the hockey puck with another primitive. To do that, first off, you uncheck edit. You go to another primitive. I'm going to pick on a 3D cube. And I'm going to have Z sub on. This will subtract into the other one. I'll click and drag it out. And I can go to move. I can move it around. I can also scale it. Scale it down. Move it. Congratulations, you made a flat headed screw. Okay, we're going to turn this into a brush so we can sculpt uh, flat headed screws all over the place. So to do that, we're going to go to this tool right here. It is called the MRGBZ grabber. Switch it and go to the modifiers and make sure auto crop is off. All right, and shaded RGB. I don't need that. What this will do, when I click and drag out, it'll make this box, and everything in this box gets captured. It gets captured over here, and you can see this is your starting point to making alphas. An alpha is a black and white with gray representation. Gray indicates depth. Uh, white is perfect as far as the height goes. Black is transparent, which is depth. Okay, In this case, uh, this will produce a shape when sculpted onto something else uh, of a flat-headed screw. Okay? Let me illustrate that. We're going to keep this over here. I'm going to hit J, or you know my menu up here, and I'm just going to go into plane. And I'll move that down. If you want to destroy the thing in the background, I can clear that out. So there we go. That would be another nifty thing to add to my JSON shelf. Layer clear, right? Because I'm doing that all the time. We'll do that later. Okay, where'd my alpha go? Well, the minute I initialized ZBrush, the minute I added to this, my alpha is still there. It's safe. It's located here. And you can see mine's spinning a little bit. And that's because up in brush, I probably have a spin feature on. So I'm going to turn that off real quick. Oh, 
oh this is dots too yep so if you want something like that here's dots and dots basically works like this if I press down click once on the mouse it's very easy to place these right next to each other but you'll notice dots auto rotates now that's new to ZBrush 4 so if you want a, just a, a plain old screw that you can put anywhere this is drag rec drag rec places the screw anywhere you want it and allows you to rotate it also and then freehand you can you can't really do much but if you do it really soft I guess you can get a screw head in there but you gotta be very careful because it will start to rotate also and it starts to warp a little bit because freehand is based upon stroke value on your in Intos 4 tablet so it's best for an alpha like this to be clicked and dragged out another thing that you know, should know is this plane right here I can make it so it's fixed in some way okay so if I go to Z and this is a real hard thing to get a hold of so I'm going to use the mouse don't try to use your Wacom tablet if you click on Z and you go like this it erases the surface of this and you can now go in here and add them test out your brushes and then if you don't like it you can go like that So that's how you make a very simple alpha. Let's go on to the next video where I can explain more.